All right, so now we're going to show you uh, once you've got your ignition module and um, uh, connected to power and you have your red light on, uh, you're going to want to pay attention to the serial number that's on the white sticker on top of your reader. And we're going to uh, do a test to make sure that the two are communicating, your computer or the module. Uh, when you open the PowerArc software for the very first time, uh, you can sometimes have um, some issues where it's going to give you a warning telling you that it does not uh, it does not know which port to use and it's very simple it will prompt you to search for the correct port uh, it will generally give you a COM1 and COM3 you select COM3 port and it, all it's doing is uh, it's, it's finding finding out which USB port in your computer is connected to the module. So again, in your programmer's kit, um, they'll have one end of the cable will connect to your circuit board on your module, and that goes through a little adapter circuit board, uh, and the other side is a USB connector, and you simply connect that to a uh, Windows-based computer. So uh, once we open up the PowerArc um, page right here, um, the first thing that we would want to do is open the file and you can select from uh, an assortment of um, curves. If we build something custom for you then we would probably email you the curve. So uh, if we go into a British and a British dual fire kit is right here and uh, that opens up your programming for the British kit. Uh, the first thing that you always do is read uh, your ignition module so that you know the two are communicating and then the second thing you're going to want to do is if you are making any custom changes we highly recommend that you save this curve as something else uh, name it you know uh, Paul's test one or super special you know turbocharged you know version whatever but uh, the main thing is that you want to get in the habit of always saving it as something else so that if you make changes and you don't like it you can go back to the default curve and this is the default curve on a British dual fire ignition so we simply click on the help button we go down to about power arc IDS and this little box pops up and if we have the um, ignition module connected to the computer and the LED top dead center light is lit we should be able to read our ignition module and in this case our serial number in this one is 7608 that does match what I have on my module it has a firmware version of 5.04 which are what the modern modules will have there was a older version 4.05 but uh, for most of you you won't see that the number of engine starts are one uh, these ignition modules record um, how many times um, they have been uh, started and of course one indicates that this was tested at power arc before it was shipped to C5 performance uh, number of times it exceeded the maximum RPMs that is a settable value uh, something that engine tuner would use um, but uh, right now we're not going to explain that uh, we've read this the serial number matches we'll click OK and now we know there's communication we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and explain how this curve works the main thing is for those of you who are reloading a curve um, because either you've made a change or because you've had something custom made or if there was some, you know, some kind of an issue with it where we're having you reload the software uh, we're simply going to ask you again to, to open up the appropriate curve which we've done here and then once we have this curve this shows uh, the first curve and on a C1, which this one is, this has two curves. It'll show you the different curves. On anything a C2, 3, or 4, meaning it, it would control two, three, or four different coils, uh, there will be four different options here. Uh, whenever you've made your changes and you're ready to download this onto your computer, you will simply click on Program Ignition. And when you pro program here, it will ask you to make sure that your red LED light is on and if it is you will press OK to continue programming it takes just a few seconds and it tells you it's been reprogrammed at this point in time you could disconnect your ignition module reinstall it in your vehicle and you're ready to go 
Um, so for the first portion of this video, uh, this is how you reprogram it. Um, if you were going to um, upgrade firmware for some reason, let's say that you, uh, you did something bad and the ignition needs to be reformatted first, you would go to upgrade firmware, select that, um, go into the firmware file that we would have sent you, uh, and then download your firmware. Uh, when you're done reloading the firmware, then you will go back and select your curve and simply click on program ignition and you'll program the timing curve back into it. So again, uh, if this is all you're going to do at this point you can disconnect the power lead um, to your ignition module, reinstall it in the vehicle and you're ready to go. For those of you who want to know a little bit more about how this whole system works, uh, let me just tell you that this red line indicates when the coil turns on or the saturation time. It'll tell you uh, the RPM and it'll tell you the degrees um, at each particular point. There are 10 dots. Here it says 10 transitions, uh, 3 sparks. Uh, this tells you at what time you turn the coil on. This can be adjusted if you want to. Um, you, can, you can mess around with it a little bit if you want. The yellow curve uh, indicates the first spark the blue indicates the second spark and the third indicates the third spark. Again, you can change these around uh, if you want to. You can go, uh, this is at uh, zero RPM uh, all the way up to, this indicates 12,000. Uh, this dotted line right here, the vertical line, uh, is your rev limit. Your rev limit is also listed here. You can change it two ways. You can highlight this and you can put in the correct amount or you can simply click on this line and drag it anywhere you want to and now you'll notice that the rev limit over here has changed so that's how you adjust your rev limit your rev limit cannot go further to the left than your last black dot so at this point this is as low as you can go if you need to go lower than that then you need to slide these dots over and now you can slide this bar further down if you want to um, each one of the timing curves can be adjusted independent of all the other ones. So you can have a launch curve or an engine break-in curve on one of these and simply by grounding or ungrounding your, uh, your lead on your module you can, uh, you can jump from curve to curve and you can have independent uh, actually every single item on here can be independent of one another. So again this is simply showing you the curves. Uh, if you have a machine and you want to, uh, let's say that you added a turbocharger and uh, you wanted to uh, increase um, the timing advance at the lower RPM because you feel that uh, in testing this is an advantage, you can go ahead and set a more aggressive timing curve if you want to. And when you've built enough uh, pressure, and let's just say that at 3500 RPM uh, your turbo or supercharger is producing enough boost where you want to retard the timing then you can simply retard the timing at whatever whatever you feel is necessary. You try to keep the three sparks apart uh, this gives the engine time to redistribute the unburned fuel before it sparks a second or third time. If you have the sparks too close together uh, you really defeat the purpose of trying to give it a second and third chance. So then on this particular curve, um, your timing starts at 10 degrees at zero. At once it's idling at 1000 RPM, your timing is right around 25 degrees. And let's say that uh, your maximum advance is 36 degrees at 2550. And then you have determined that you want this to start retarding your timing. Well, then of course it can. In testing, if you felt that uh, you went too far, again, you can make these changes anytime you want to. If you want to be very specific in one area, you could bring these, make a very unique timing curve if you wish. And you can leave it like that. Again, the possibilities are endless. Just remember that when you want to save it, you want to go in here and click Save As and give it a different name 
so that you don't accidentally write over the original default program. If you go in and mess it up and you want to change everything back the way it was again, there's no problem doing that. Um, so uh, you can turn the sparks into just a single spark or a two spark or a three spark. But uh, of course, I don't really see an advantage in doing that. So when you're done, you can go ahead and choose your next curve. And this would be the second curve, and you can do the same thing all over again. So again, you can program in at least two curves. Some ignitions take four. And then you can go out and do your testing or go to the dyno room, and you'll have uh, a couple different options pre-selected, so it makes it easier for you to test. And uh, when you're done, don't forget to click on Program Ignition. Uh, make sure that your ignition is, is uh, connected and the red LED light is on and you're ready to go. I would also recommend making um, uh, saving these as you go, making small changes. So you're going to change a few things. Um, remember to go back and save and then uh, make some more corrections and save just in case there's a, a problem. Again, you can play around with all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, the main thing is just to make sure that you understand how all of this stuff functions and uh, if you want to um, you can adjust your sensors you can change some things here you also can um, if you go into file you can program your rev limiter without reprogramming your curve so if you go in here and you say yes and it'll ask you what your RPM change what you want your new rev limit to be you can just type it in and click on program and it would program your ignition module without changing the curve. So that is essentially how you do it.